What's up everybody, welcome back to the Swerve Tech channel. Today we're going to go over how we got some moat power up in this baby. So, to change the injection pump, which is what we did, this one is up to 90 millimeters of fuel, I believe, don't hold me to it. And factory is about 50. So, first step first, you're going to want to take off these lines, keep them extremely clean. Because if you get any contamination in the lines, then it will clog an injector and you will be sending them off to get uh, rebuilt and cleaned out. So you got five lines. So you got five nuts up here, five right here. Get those out of the way. And then you have to undo the um, nut down there. Let's see if I can, this one right there next to the primer. You have to undo that one and then the banjo right behind it. I went ahead and undid it at this filter housing and down there um, just to give me some more room. And then you have the three nuts, the one right here, the one back there, and then the one directly behind the pump that corresponds to this one. And then also while we're here, you have the oil line, which is the little bitty bolt right there. And it goes to right there. Once you get those out of the way, you can go to the oil lines, which right here I have my AM lines. You can kind of see that one right there. And then the one other one is behind it. So yeah. So a lot of people think or say that you have to remove the oil filter housing to get it out. You do not if you have these AM lines and these small little fittings that Vent Horse offers right there. Those adapter fittings that go to AN. So once I got those out, I um, undid my throttle cable, pulled that over here, and I think I'm forgetting some stuff. Okay, so you got your fuel into the primer pump. That has to get out of here, obviously. You have your Alda hose, which mine was deleted originally, so I didn't have this going to it, so I had to tee that in right here, going to my boost gauge. Um... So you have the three nuts. Oh, the last thing. Silly, let me almost forgot. So let's get you in here. So back here is a plate that bolts to the engine block. And then it bolts to the back of the pump. It's hard to see right there, but there is the support bracket that goes on the back of the pump. You can get a wrench in there. I have a snap-on wrench. It's like this big, 13 millimeter. I got the nut out of the pump and used some extensions, got the bracket off the pump, wiggled it for like a minute or two, got it off the spring, which holds the uh, throttle back here. I'm not sure if I can get it. It's down in there. It's really going to be hard to see, but it pulls against the throttle return spring. So once you got the bracket, the three nuts, the banjo, hard line bolts and the fuel lines, the fuel supply line. I left the return line here. Um, from that point, I slid the pump out this way some and then picked it up over this way and then slid it out. And once I had it out, uh, I came over to let's see if I can get it good on here to the timing mark which you can just see it behind everything so I set that to 24 and then you open up this filler cap don't mind the oil up there <sighs> oof that may be tight okay so you remove the cap, you look in with the flashlight, and then you will be looking for the cam lobes. Let me get this on. So the cam lobes are gonna be like bunny ears, like this, or like that. Some are looking like bunny ears if they're like off, and it's gonna be two separate lobes. But if it's off, then you need to spin it around again. Some people say 24 degrees before top dead center. Some people say 26 degrees. I did 24. Seems to be running great. Um, the idle was a little bit low, 
but it's okay for me. It doesn't seem like it's too low where it's like knocking and clinking and making all sorts of crazy noises or uh, super low oil pressure. Everything seems to be fine. As far as that goes, uh, once I got it to 24 degrees before top dead center, got the bunny ear cam lobes looking good. Um, on the pump, there is a little bit of mark that you have to line up with a like an indexing line on the splines. Once you get that, um, I slid the little collar that goes between the intermediate shaft and the pump onto there, onto the uh, intermediate shaft, and then played with the pump Got it back in, and then once it was in, and I got all the three nuts, not really tight per se, but snug enough where you can still barely move the pump without destroying the gasket from sliding it back and forth on the surfaces of the pump and the block. Some people say to don't drip time it, and some people say just turn it on and pull the pump back and forth, but with fighting the hard lines, it's kind of a nightmare to do so. So you can safely, if you are willing to, you can remove this lower, um, I believe it's 15 millimeter. And when you remove that, there will be a spring and a little uh, cylinder. Very carefully with very extremely clean gloves, remove the spring and the little cylinder. And then you will pinch the return with some vice grips hold the throttle at wide open and then you will proceed to pump the pump the primer pump this as much as you can you can even use a, a pressure tank and go on the supply and just fill it full of diesel and then it'll feed in but you're looking for one drip per second on this very first uh, line which I already have extra lines so I bent one up It'll drip one drip per second, and once it does one drip per second, like this, as you can see, I dripped timed it before. Um, yeah, once you do that, then you will be good to install the hard lines. Installing the hard lines back on after you put a different pump in is literally the hardest part of the job. It's still very easy to do, but just the hardest part of installing the bigger pump. Uh, this is literally lifted. My arm is almost straight out. I'm six foot two, so it's a little bit hard to work over the fender because the fender's literally like at my chest. So I worked through here and through the fender well and then also kneeling over right here. But once I got the pump in, got all the, yeah, the nuts on, got it drip timed, tightened up those three I slightly ground down the bracket to make it slide in easier behind the pump. And I had to use some extremely long needle nose pliers to attach the spring to the throttle return. Put the plate back on. Then I proceeded to the lines. Um, in my case, I loosened up these little things that hold the lines together, took them off, put the nuts on up there first on the injectors loosely, like they were snug, but it wasn't cranked down. It wasn't super loose of the lines all bouncing around and then bent them slightly by hand until they fit on there perfect. You don't want to just try to crank this nut down because you'll destroy the threads on this nut and or on this uh, cylinder that goes into the pump. So once you get those all adjusted good. Oh, so I think it's lugging. Good old dump truck. Yeah, so once you get these all good, you can put these back on. This one was a little bit of a doozy because I tried to leave these like loose or whatever, but then I just said forget about it and took them off completely bent and like, I'd say probably 35 minutes I had all five of these, maybe even 40 minutes I had all five bent perfectly, got them all on, tighten these down, tighten these down, and then like wiggle them back and forth just a hair to see if they would move. They were all extremely tight. Put these back on, the little supports. Then I loosened these. And then once I did is unpinch the return, release the throttle, which does still function like the factory, exactly like I wanted it to. So I released that. So then we had full function of everything again. 
I pumped the primer and then I cracked this one, which helps get the rest of the air out because it has to circulate through the, no, sorry. Yeah, it goes from the primer, which would have been empty because I put a new, or not a new primer, but I put the primer from the old pump onto this one so it would have drained the fuel out. These lines were empty, this one was empty, which I did forget about this one. This one goes to the back of the pump. So you can see right there. So yeah, this one I just loosened, turn this line over here, put a glove around it, keep it nice and clean. And then, yeah, so this stayed loose. I pumped that until I did not see any more air coming out of this clear line, which is pretty evident because the fuel was yellow. As you can see, it's not completely clear. Of course, the sun's beaming on it, but it's all good. So once I stopped seeing air, tighten this down. And then I turned it over. And some people say you can turn it on with three of these spraying fuel. I just turned it over it and then like if this one say this one sprayed out fuel I would close this one and then just keep doing it until the other ones stopped uh, or started I should say started spitting out fuel once those were done spitting out fuel I knew that the pump was primed so then I closed them all up cleaned all the fuel off and then proceeded to do the first start and the first start went great it fired right up um, yeah, and since then I've had no issues at all. I'm still needing to do a nut and bolt check on this thing. Um, I know when I drive it, I do drive it pretty hard. I don't really give it any brakes with keeping a extremely good eye on the EGTs because this thing can wrap up to 1400 before you know it if you're being silly on the throttle. Um, and again, today whenever I went and wheeled it, I aired it down, nothing crazy. I don't even have a gauge with me, but I just held a little bolt on the valve stem until I thought it was good, which I kind of struggled in the same, but it did all right. So back to this. So so yeah, I haven't had any issues whatsoever with that. And then the turbo, I've already went over all that. I still need to build an air box and then get a water to air intercooler and get rid of this straight from the turbo into the intake setup just so my EGTs will be way more controllable and it'll be way more usable power instead of just wasted fuel because you really don't want it smoking especially for washing out the cylinders and it's just wasted horsepower and it doesn't really look cool but some people are into all that stuff so yeah we're going to keep on chipping away at this thing I know I've been saying that for a while and I do have a tag and insurance on it and I do drive it but it's still got bugs to be found to work out but so far I haven't really found many bugs besides I keep getting contamination in the fuel filter which I also changed whenever I did the new pump and I keep getting nasty stuff in there so yeah you will see what kind of things I put this thing through today so stay tuned.